Welcome to The Hill's Coronavirus Report. I'm Steve Clemens, Editor-at-Large of The Hill. Each day we are interviewing consequential leaders and innovators in the battle against the coronavirus. Turns out that pandemics are not sprints. They're marathons of wreckage, of harm and disaster for so many. Whether today or in 1918 or 1957 or 68, when other pandemics hunted around the world, the answer is to monitor exposure and infections, to distance, to wear masks, to up our hygiene game. But in every single case, the way out requires behavioral adjustments, and those adjustments sometimes come with a very high price. What I'm talking about today are restaurants, which, I, which have had in many cases to close or slim down. Restaurant workers who waited on our needs in those establishments, food suppliers at farms who would provide the product that chefs and line cooks would make for us. The food ecosystem has been under incredible stress because of COVID. And then, and then, there are those risking their lives for us, some working because that's their job, and others are volunteering to save us. Calling them frontline workers doesn't really catch it anymore. Even frontline heroes has become a bit of a cliche and tossed around too much, but they are our most vital people, and they are us. They're all around, and they're saving us, working insane hours. And my next guest asked a few of these folks early on what they most need to help them, and the answer was pizza. Today, I'm happy that we have the co-founder of Frontline Foods, an entrepreneur and investor, the former head of platform at Twitter, but they can't have him today, even though they need him. <laughs> We've got him, Ryan Sarver, and one of his biggest supporters and collaborators who is helping to shine a giant light on restaurants, small businesses, and how to keep all this vital network in place that we need uh, to keep them alive in stressed out times. Entertainer and comedian and you know, the host of nearly every cool show out there, Joel McHale, who the last time we hung out, and he won't remember this, was at a super crowded bar, lots of closeness restaurant uh, at the nerdy and not so pretty White House Correspondents Dinner crowd at Fiola Mare here in Georgetown. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Um, let me just start out for a moment with you, Joel, because you and some of your actor friends, Melissa McCarthy, Ben Falcone, Octavia Spencer, you saw this on your own, and, 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 and I think it's important because sometimes people look at entertainers and wonder why they get involved, but you saw restaurants in Studio City closing. You saw uh, uh, farmers' markets in trouble. And so just before we jump into you know, the former platform guy at Twitter, tell us how, why you kind of thought this was a, a needle you wanted to be moving. Well, you pretty much... Uh... You pretty much said it uh, because when the COVID first hit, all these restaurants that I love started going down. And I thought the very least that I could do uh, was to just make a video with them and put them on Instagram and say, this restaurant's still open at these hours on these days, and they're making this great food, and here's the chef, and here's the people that work there, and help. Uh, because obviously with essential workers in hospitals, and uh, you know, essential services, working in grocery stores. Uh, we need them desperately, as you said. And I think sometimes restaurants take kind of a backseat to that because uh, it's people who can, who can afford restaurants and sometimes they're, you know, it's disposable incomes in some, in some ways. Other restaurants are uh, not that way, but I thought if I could just do a little bit like that, a little bit of a video, then I, I could help in a, in a small way. Uh, and then Ben and Melissa and Octavia, uh, they saw our videos, uh, some of my videos, and they had already started a thing that they were doing, and we kind of got together. And as you, you've already mentioned, uh, we started trying to put together a, a, a nonprofit, which is hard to do in a week. And then in comes uh, Superman, uh, Ryan, and they already had Frontline Foods going. And then we just took, we just dovetailed off them and we took all the credit. And that's why it's called uh, Joel Front Foods now. And yeah, so that's kind of how that quickly, that, that's a very quick thumbnail sketch of what happened. But, um, but I, again, anybody listening or watching, go to restaurants and uh, seek them out and tell your friends about them. That's that's my small message. Well, I mean, bringing Ryan, because Ryan has been an incredible investor, a builder of companies, an early investor, an entrepreneur out there that's worked in the kind of for-profit side of things. And I've been intrigued with a number of uh, people like Ryan who have taken this talents and skills they have. Uh, so Ryan, I'm, you know, you can blush now, but you know, it brought this to social challenges and, and, and trying to fix problems. So tell us 
um, why you made the, sh the shift from you know, being, I, I know you're still an early investor out there in lots of firms, but you brought that to trying to solve this food and restaurant and worker problem. And also, for, I mean, I want to keep the frontline workers that you're feeding uh, as part of this equation. Ryan? Yeah, I mean, it all started with a kind of really simple uh, action. A, a friend of mine named Frank Barbieri and a mutual friend of ours named Sydney Gressel. Uh, she is an ER nurse at UCSF Mission Bay here in San Francisco. And they were chatting right as kind of COVID was starting to hit the hospitals and they were all training up on kind of COVID protocols. And they said, hey, what, you know, as mere mortals can we do to help support you? And she said, honestly, like a pizza party would be amazing. You know, usually we get kind of donuts and cold coffee and we're working a bunch of hours. and It would just be an amazing morale boost for the team. And Frank reached out to me and, you know, we, we just started chatting. And a bunch of my friends were um, owners of restaurants nearby. And while Sheltered Place hadn't fully started yet, uh, it was the beginning of kind of the shutdown. You could see what was coming. And I just knew how desperately they would really appreciate the business. And so that that day we bought uh, kind of $1,000 worth of pizza to send over to the hospital. And the restaurant owner was so ecstatic. And the hospital workers, our friends, were just so ecstatic. And it felt so simple and so good. And we thought, how how can we kind of expand this a little bit more? And I think we never really imagined how far it would go. Um, but that would start with that simple idea. Um, what, before I jump back to Joel, I want to kind of uh, here, here, if he's had any interactions with some of these folks that he's helped uh, uh, keep alive, you know, the workers, the, the frontline food folks. But, but Ryan, when you, when you look at what you've built and, and you've done, you're now working with Jose Andres somewhat, World Central Kitchen. And, you know, Jose came on this show and he explained to all of our viewers how the kind of food ecosystem works, you know, farm to table, to restaurants, to workers, to helping vulnerable communities. There are a lot of people in vulnerable communities, elder, uh, homeless, and others that, that could not get the resources together to food. And then the cities and towns, particularly in California, were looking at this case where their revenues were collapsing from business collapsing. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. how do you get money kind of do all this? And, and so that's a complex ecosystem of pieces. You know, how, how quickly did that complex ecosystem begin to run over you? Because it's not a small thing what you're doing. No, I think the it is a complex ecosystem, and people generally see the front door of a restaurant and kind of you know only think of it to that level. But behind the scene are liquor distributors and farmers and flower uh, florists who are helping support those restaurants. And so while it is a complex ecosystem, the beautiful and simple part of it is if you just give them money to do what they do, that money flows backwards from there into all of those parts of the ecosystem. Now, some of it was complicated because you know factories are getting shut down and fewer drivers were available. Uh, but in the small amount we were able to do and the few restaurants we were able to work with, that really simple gesture of just paying them to do what they love to do and what they are great at allowed that money to flow back into the rest of the local ecosystem. Joel, you and Octavia and Ben and, and everyone, I, I know particularly Octavia has been raising a lot of profile about, against, you know, particularly in this time of racial stress, the George Floyd murders, Black Lives Matter, that there are communities out there that have not been part of these networks. Can you share with us at all you know, some of the stories you've seen of the people you've impacted and and how, you know, our identity and inclusiveness is an important part of this as well. Well, my part is very small in all this. Uh, I, you know, I pushed out, I pushed it out and, and, and wanted, you know, as much coverage of frontline foods as we could get. Uh, because And we would see the reactions to the hospital staffs that uh, through sending photos of everyone around with a pile of frontline food in front of them. And a lot of them would say that, uh, you know, say, thank you so much. It meant so much. And I, you know, Ryan is the real genius here as far as putting it all together and, and setting up those supply lines that are continuing today. Uh, cause one meal to one hospital is fine and good, but they need, it needs to be sustained. Uh, and then with, George Floyd's murder, uh, obviously our country is going through uh, incredible times right now. And uh, so getting people fed during that time when there's high unemployment, there's high unrest, and uh, there's so much justice that has to take place. It's just even more, it's even more urgent to get food to people who deeply need it and can't afford it. But Ryan said it is that if you just have a restaurant, uh, if you get that money to them, it'll go to the, all the different parts, like the liquor distributors, the farmers, 
uh, the people who drive it. If you keep that system going, when COVID is finally gone, hopefully sooner than later with a couple of these vaccines uh, hitting phase three, the impact or the when it, when it reo when we really reopen these restaurants, it will hopefully be an easier transition uh, back to what it was, and uh, hopefully less workers would have to have been uh, furloughed or fired. So uh, that's that's what I'm, I hope by the time if we can just hold on until January or uh, February or March when this vaccine finally is available. Joel, let me ask you a tough question, get, get a little work out of this. You're an incredible communicator. You've got a fantastic platform. You have everybody you. on both sides of the aisle, <laughs> literally. I mean, I watched that last Tiger King uh, episode. And, you know, I know that a lot of people watching that Tiger epi King episode think masks should be burned. They think that this is a time, you know, when they're being lied to. Government sucks at communication, in my view. And I'm just interested in what insights you have for getting you know, different sides of our equation in the country to trust one another again, to begin looking at some of these problems we have, you know, as more of a community rather than, you know, masks being a, 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 you know, a political act, if you will, because you're talking to everybody. What do you understand and see about communication that our government leaders don't get? Oh, I, I am, you're giving me way too much credit. Again, I'm an entertainer and- uh... But you did speak at the White House Correspondents' Dinner, so you're kind of one of us a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, w I will say, I mean, you, you can say follow the science until you're blue in the face, which is a whole other kind of science. Uh, but, uh, and I, 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 my only suggestion would be if you don't want to wear a mask, um, or if, if you're really against masks, just get a mask that displays the message you would like to s display across the mask. <laughs> And then no matter what it is, hey, you'll be wearing a mask, you'll be saying what you want to say uh, politically or socially, uh, but you'll be covered. Uh, and I, I and that 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 I, maybe that would help. But I, when I hear the where you do more testing, that's why there's more tests. That's why there's more positive results. Uh, when I hear that, I go, we may be testing a lot, but we're, it's not like that because there's so many more cases because there's testing. If the numbers were going down, then the hospitals wouldn't be so packed. Right. So mm -hmm. that I, that's the thing that I always, that's the point I always make. If the hospitals were not as packed and we were just testing and testing, we had more positives, that, then that would be, would show that we were testing more than anyone. But the hospitals are packed and there's an 11% infection rate in uh, Florida right now at this moment. And uh, it does kind of boggle my mind. I don't, I don't know how to bring these folks it's, together. As you know, I just tell sarcastic jokes and, and usually a fart joke. And that that gets me uh, that buys me a lot of real estate. Uh, but uh, but I, I just say, please, please, please follow the science. You, you follow the science when you drive a car. You know, people know all about inertia and you definitely need to hit the brake sometimes. So uh, again, as you can tell, I'm not a scientist. And the more I talk, the dumber I sound. Ryan, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I don't agree with that, but Ryan, you work, as I count, on the Frontline Foods website in 40, 50, 60 cities right now. Scott Gottlieb, the former head of the FDA, said today on CNBC that this problem is going to get bigger. There are going to be more people who die. There's going to be, you know, that we're already in the second wave, he said, and when it collides with flu, we're going to have continue to have these problems and distancing and, you know, the way we're interacting with restaurants is going to still be there. So, not everyone can go out and, and do what you've done and create this. I know that you're a nonprofit 501c3. So tell us what your guide plans are right now as you move from now into the future in, in probably a worse environment. Are you going to expand? Can people give money? How can they be part of the picture? Totally. And, and Steve, just to put a fine point on it, I do think anyone can do this. Um, it, it wasn't something unique to us in San Francisco. Joel and his group had a similar idea and the same idea we had was you know, propping up in a number of places. I think we were able to bring a lot of that energy together to build a large organization. But I think one of my big takeaways from this is in the middle of a crisis like this, uh, anyone can just get to work and help out in however way they can. And so uh, I think it's an important message and it's a time that requires all hands on deck. You know, as we think about the future of our organization, I think, you know, we we look at this as we're probably in the third inning of a you know long baseball game, unfortunately. 
And a lot of people are tired. They're, you know, they're tired of being stuck at home. They're tired of the monotony. The, you know, homeschooling was really difficult. And, and honestly, uh, donations have been really difficult, right? People have been dealing with uh, uh, a lot of giving over the past four months with social justice projects and uh, COVID-based projects. So, you know, a lot of the focus is around where do we find the capital to continue to support the small businesses because they need it now more than ever and they will continue to need it for the next year plus. Like the economic impact that it's going to hit these small businesses is really, really insidious and hard to see because it's a little bit below the surface and will take a while for it all to come uh, come to fruition. So uh, we look over the next few years, we're now merged in with Jose Andres' World Central Kitchen. They are an incredible organization with even more breadth and resources than, than we had. Uh, and we're here to help support them in, in you know, expanding our mission, but also helping support them in their mission of bringing a warm meal and a helping hand to anyone in need as, they, as a crisis hits. Well, I really appreciate what you both are doing. And I, and I, I had promised myself I was gonna be completely serious in, in today's interview, but I just can't <laughs> help it. Um, I'm gonna send the picture of the two of you to rate my room um, you know, they've been raiding Skype rooms uh, behind people and, you know, just, just Joel, I mean, what are you going for with, with your room? <laughs> yeah, and I, I want to look like an RA at a dorm. And <laughs> it's not uh, working. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? that, that, that's a good lighting look. Like what's, so, yeah, it's, uh, I, I like to point out that I, again, I have a copier here if you want. <laughs> copy or a fax or something it's it looks like i'm i i feel like everything's been taken from me like uh like i was renting furniture and then someone needed it back so uh i i they're gonna rate this very poorly i don't know they may so, give you like big big stripes times. you know what go ahead ryan i say i don't think there's many times that i will get more highly rated than joel on video but uh i will take that one today great well well thank you well ryan uh and and joel McHale, thank you so much for what you're doing with frontline foods and sharing the story there i know real people are connected to to, to the programs you built out and i recommend that people go look online at the frontline uh, foods website it's extraordinary uh the footprint in the nation right now and the people they're helping so thanks to you both and I want to yeah, thank all of you for joining me today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Steve Clemens. Be well.